Man, what a bird brain that guy is. <laughs> that used to be an insult, but it probably shouldn't be. Hi, I'm Larry Whitmer, and welcome to another Random Act of Anatomy. So I'm here on a Sunday trying to finish up photography on this guy, which is a new Caledonian crow that we have on loan from the Smithsonian. This is an African gray parrot, and these guys are kind of famous for their cognitive abilities. Uh, their ability to not just um, use, but to make tools, to solve problems, their language and math abilities. Uh, they can recognize their own reflection in a mirror. These are cognitive feats that surpass those of most mammals and start to get into uh, the range that we tend to associate with higher primates or, or even great apes. So the question has always been, how do birds accomplish these cognitive feats, which with m must be pretty small brains? So we ran these guys through the Ohio University micro CT scanner, digitally extracted their brain endocasts, and then 3D printed them on the OU 3D printer. And sure, these brains are actually relatively large relative to their body size, but they're still really small compared to mammals. How does this actually work? It's really been a mystery for many years. But last year an article uh, appeared that sort of rocked our little corner of, of the scientific world. And what it showed is that bird brains are different. Unlike mammals, birds have a really high density, um, high numbers of very small, densely packed neurons. Um, and particularly if we look at something like uh, parrots and crows, we see that in the forebrain region, they have uh, much more densely packed neurons that really exceed those than what we see in primates. Very impressive. When we look at other birds, although we don't see the kind of, of, of neuronal structure that we see in, in parrots and crows, we do see, even in relatively um, archaic primitive birds, like this rat type, this, this emu here, that actually have neuronal densities that are actually very comparable to what we see in primates. And so for someone like me, who's really interested in deep time, the question becomes, how far back in, in evolutionary time does this neuronal structure of birds actually exist? In other words, could something like T. rex have a bird-like neuronal structure? The reality is, we don't know. Uh, but we can actually take a look at the brain endocast of, of a T-Rex and see a couple of things. Sure, absolutely, compared to its body size, T-Rex had a relatively very small brain. But if you think about it in absolute terms, you know, compared to these guys, that looks like a pretty big brain. But the thing you always have to remember is that large animals need to have a pretty large brain just to sort of integrate and manage all of the motor and sensory information that's coming from that large body. Still, the question becomes, in terms of its cognitive ability, maybe if it had something approaching the neuronal structure that we see in birds today, maybe these guys had more going for them than we may have thought in the past. Certainly, when we think about some of the small bird-like dinosaurs, really raises these questions. So this is the brain endocast of an animal that we used to call Troodon. And many people have regarded this as one of the smartest dinosaurs because of a relatively large brain compared to its body. Certainly, it has a very bird-like brain structure, but the question then becomes, could Troodontids or T. rex or other dinosaurs had, have had something approaching the neuronal packing that we see in birds today. And the reality is we don't know. How can we get at this information that might actually shed light on these extinct animals? The one piece of the puzzle that we don't have yet is what's going on in other modern day dinosaur relatives. Things like crocodilians or lizards or snakes. Could these other modern day relatives of dinosaurs also had uh, something approaching what we see in birds with larger numbers of small densely packed neurons? If so, then maybe we can start to view some of these dinosaurs a little differently. Maybe even view them with more respect. And so, I'm Larry Whitmer, and that's all for today. Thanks very much.